And, and just, Lord Cameron, just to clarify, so you have received no advice at any point from any government lawyer that states that Israel is in breach of international humanitarian law? That's not what I said. No, that's why I'm asking you to clarify. Yes, well, I'm, I'm going to give exactly the same answer all over again, um, uh, which is what my role is, right? I'm not interested in the role, I'm interested in the legal advice you've received. Yes, well, the legal advice I've received is consistent with the fact that we have not changed our export it's um, not about arms exports, it's about international humanitarian law being upheld when it comes to aid, when it comes to the way in which airstrikes have been prosecuted, everything else. We're one question on arms exports, we've, we've moved from them <coughs> in um, any realm, in any respect. So you've never had a piece of paper put in front of you by a foreign office lawyer that says that Israel is in breach of its international humanitarian commitments under international humanitarian law. Um, look, I... I, I the reason for not answering this question, I can't recall every single bit of paper that's been put in front of me. I see, I look at everything. I mean, of course, there are lots of things that have happened where you think, well, surely that is that was something that shouldn't have happened, and uh, and so I don't want to answer that question because. Forgive me. I, in 2013, you were quite happy to say from the dispatch box that war crimes had been committed by the Assad regime when it came to chemical weapons use, and two years later, you were happy to say that Hamas had committed a war crime when they shot rockets into <coughs> Israel. Yeah, well, I do think there's a difference between. You know, using chemical weapons to kill people, and uh, Israel fighting a, a conflict where they're trying to deal with a, a terrorist force that inflicted an appalling attack on it's their country. It's a difference country. in setting or specifics or scale, but not in principle, which was your willingness and ability to determine whether or not international <coughs> law had been broken. I'm, I'm not sure we're going to get a lot further with this. Um, well, well, I mean, if you're asking me, am, if you're asking me, yeah, sure. no, but if you're asking, am I worried that Israel have ta has taken action that might be in breach of international law because this particular premises has been bombed or whatever? Yes, of course I'm worried about that, and that's why I consult the Foreign Office lawyers when giving this advice on arms exports. So that's why I don't. So you're, if you put it that way, I'm happy to say yes, of course. Every day, I look at what's happened and ask questions about, is this in line with international humanitarian law? Could the Israelis have done better to avoid civilian casualties? Of course I do that. No, we, we have no doubt that you'd ask those questions. It's about the response you've received. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I understand that the question that you want to answer, yeah. but the question that I want to ask is the point, have you received legal advice which says that Israel is in breach of international humanity. The short answer to that is no. But, you, you, but, but I, but, but, but okay. I, 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 well, I want to qualify it instantly because it's not fair on the lawyers because, of course, the lawyers give you lots of advice saying, look, we're worried about this event, that event, this event, that event. We're going to go away. We're going to consult with the Israeli authorities. We're going to ask a bunch of questions. And then we're going to give you considered legal advice, given everything, on the basis of you know, capability, commitment, and everything else, have they broken international law. So that's why it's not really a yes or no answer. Well, but I, I'm trying to be helpful by sort of explaining how the job works. Okay, I'll, I'll, does, that, does, that, does that help at all? No. <laughs> but unfortunately, this is, I think this is as good as we're going to get from you. Can I ask, uh, finally, um, uh, Chair, well, so what assessment have you made of the Israeli ambassador's claim that every school, mosque and every second house in Gaza has access to tunnels and ammunition? Now, she said that in a television, in a television interview, and when pressed on whether that means the complete destruction of Gaza by Israel, she replied, and I quote, do you have another solution? So in your opinion, was she freelancing when she was speaking to that television interviewer, or I, was she speaking for the Israeli government? I, I don't um, okay. agree with that approach. Um, look, if you're asking me... No, I'm I, not asking you about the approach. I'm asking yeah. about do you think she was speaking to the Israeli know. government, I, I, or I, was she freelancing? I, I don't know. I would hope that, that that is not the position of the Israeli government, because it's the wrong position. 